the High Alps were the venue for a day that will go down in history at the Tour de France. The day before stage 11, the tenth stage had been won by Magnus Court, king of the mountains in Denmark, king of the big mountains the first time we got to them. Tadej Pogacar held on to the yellow jersey by just 11 seconds from Leonard Kemner, who'd been in the breakaway. Jonas Vingegaard would be at 39 seconds. Albertville, venue for the Winter Olympics 30 years ago, was the venue for the start of Stage 11. A day that no cycling fan who was watching would ever forget. Finishing up the Col du Granon for the first time since 1986, the stage would head up the Telegraph and the mighty Galibier. 151.7 kilometers from north to south, finishing at the Col du Granon, venue for that victory by Eduardo Chosas in 1986. That will be the last day that Bernard Ino ever wore the yellow jersey. What will be the fate of the yellow on this particular day? Mighty gradients all along the day, over 4,000 meters of climbing and a dream breakaway to start up. Mathieu van der Poel and Wat van Aert acting like it was boxing there at Solder, going away together. Van Aert would extend his lead in the points classification, taking 20. And 20 was the number of the riders up the road in the early breakaway. It took 30 kilometers to form and would soon grab quite a gap going over the first Lassé de Montvernier climb. Then at the top of the Telegraph, it all kicked off. Jombo Visma launching a huge attack. Van Aert already up the road with Laporte, ready to contribute. Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vingegaard going at Tadej Pogacar like it was the 1950s. Copy Bartali. Riders on their own almost, epic stuff, still with almost 60 k's to go. Marc Soler really stuck up and stood to be counted. He'd be there trying to defend things for UAE Emirates who are already weakened by coronavirus. Meanwhile, up the road, up to the top of the tour's most used climb and the organizer Henri Degrange's favorite, Balgil was away. Behind though, you couldn't take your eyes off it. Primoz Roglic was at it again. Pogacar tried to defend from the front, and you were left wondering if he'd be left to pay for the efforts. Geraint Thomas was reacting well. Naido Quintana was there or thereabouts, as was Balde, but Quintana's teammate Warren Bargill would take the souvenir Henri Degrange for the highest point of the tour. 2,640 metres, they were crested with Wout van Aert back in towards the end and helping to try and bring Roglic back with Vingegaard a little further up the road. Pogacar was even lured into chasing things on the flat. And once we got to the final climb, Roglic put in one big final dig. Kuss wouldn't last long, and it would be up to Rafael Maika to try and sort things out for UAE Emirates. Naido Quintana launched an attack on that final climb, the Col du Granon, rising out of Serre Chevalier, a narrow, windy road with gradients well above 10% in places. Romain Bardet would then set off from the Pogaccio bunch. Still Micah doing his job at this point. And then Vingago, just over five kilometers when he attacked. And the man who'd been the closest Pogacar last year was ready to threaten him this time out. Quintana would reach the front of the race, Vingegaard would go straight past Balde, Mike had done, and Pogacar showing weakness for the first time in his career. Geraint Thomas going beyond Pogacar, Vingegaard getting past Quintana and moving into the yellow virtual jersey. Even Yates and Godou were getting the better of a Pogacar in crisis and Jonas Vingegaard rode on and finished the job. An appointment with history. Jombo Visma having the courage to take it on 60 kilometers from the finish on some of the toughest roads that the Tour de France had ever presented its contestants. A first Tour de France stage win for him. The 39 seconds passed, he was in the yellow jersey. Naido Quintana moved up in the general classification, as did Roman Baldi. Frenchman now on the podium. Geraint Thomas into fourth. Quintana down in fifth. 
Tadej Pogacar losing almost three minutes on the road and after a stage for the ages he'd now be two minutes and 22 seconds behind in third position. Jonas Vingegaard at 25 years of age will be the new leader. Victory by almost a minute from Quintana, a minute and ten from Balde with Thomas and Gordou in the top five. Yates finishing ahead of Pogacar who really slipped and slid down into seventh on the day. Exhausted but still gentlemanly in his congratulation. Great sportsmanship shown at a new yellow jersey. A perfect day for cycling, one that will rarely be bettered. Entertainment to the end. Vingago the new leader, a two minute 16 lead over Roman Bardet. Pogaccia still on the podium, but just four seconds ahead of Thomas. Quintana in the top five. It's still all to play for. And Adduez comes the day after. 165.1 kilometers, it was all change today. Three all category climbs to come and climbing up the Galibier again from the start, this time from Priançon. A special day on day 11, one we will never forget. All chance for all change again, maybe on stage 12. It's Bastille day two. Time for the first French win. You'll be able to find out by watching on GCN+.